and Dr. Oscar Moses, pastor of Calvary Baptist Church, actually taping me from home in Chicago, checking on my family. Thank God we're doing well. I wanted to present about a 14, 15 minute Bible study to you. Uh, it might be a little lengthy, but I want to encourage you to get your notes, uh, your pen and your paper, paper, paper rather than take copious notes, uh, that you may come back and look at these notes and reflect on this scripture as we deal with this COVID-19 virus that's uh, become pandemic in the world. What is God saying to us in times like these? Well, I believe that 2 Chronicles 7, 14 speaks to God's people for such a time as this. I believe there are such things as maintenance prayers and frontline battle prayers. Uh, maintenance prayers is, Lord, just keep us, you know, bring us through. But frontline battle prayers are prayers that we pray against the enemy's camp for such a time as this. I believe that when we pray and when the people of God come together and pray, then three worlds are, are affected. Heaven is excited, earth is empowered, and hell is exasperated. So brothers and sisters, let's pray. Our Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you, Father, for the opportunity to study your word. We pray right now that you would open up our hearts, that you would forgive us of our sins, open up our hearts that we might receive what heaven is saying to the church for these days. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's jump right on into it. Again, get a note, notebook, a pencil and paper, and let's take notes. I want to talk on this, this theme, this, this Bible lesson theme. The problem with unanswered prayers. Help me say that. The problem. You're not saying anything. The problem with unanswered prayers. Amen. The context in which this chapter was written. David, the sweet psalmist of Israel, the man after God's own heart, wanted to build a worship temple for God. He wanted a place where the people of God could come and worship and offer sacrifices unto God. But God did not permit it to be so in David's time. He permitted it to be so in his son Solomon's time. Solomon is not the author of First Second Chronicles. Ezra is believed to be the author. But Solomon builds the temple and he goes into the temple and he he makes these prayers or he makes these prayer requests unto God. In chapter number six, you, you read it in your meditation time. And he says over six or seven times, Lord, hear us from heaven. Lord, hear us from heaven. Lord, hear us from heaven. And in his intercessory prayer that he prays for the people, he prays that God will protect the people, that God will provide for the people, that God would prosper the people. He, he, he wanted God's protection over the land. At the end of his prayer in chapter 6, he reminds God of who his father is, David. And he prays that prayer uh, literally, he says, for David's name's sake. Chapter number 7, God responds in a, um, in a mighty way. Fire comes down, burns up the altar and everything, and the choir is singing, the priest, the preachers are preaching and praying. And Solomon gives the benediction in verse 23. So here it is. Let me speed, uh, go fast forward. Solomon, one night, the Lord speaks to him, uh, and he speaks to him in response to his prayer. And, and this is how we really get to chapter number seven. Um, the Lord appeared to Solomon, because remember now, Solomon is praying, Lord, hear us from heaven. Hear us, protect us, keep us, get, prosper us, and, and Lord, give us your peace. And the Lord responds to Solomon with a litany of ifs, with a litany of ifs. I want you to be clear that the Lord's response was with a litany of, of ifs. Listen to God's response. God says, if I shut up heaven and there be no rain, or if I command the locusts to devour the land, or if... If I send pestilence among my people, here it is, if my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves, pray, and seek my face, and turn from their wicked ways, then, let the church say then, then will I hear from heaven, and I will forgive their sins, forgive their sins, I will heal their land, amen. God told, God told Solomon, and I want you to be clear what God told Solomon. That if the judgment of the nation would fall on the people, 
hear me real, real good. There could be a reversal if the judgment of the nation would fall on the people. There could be a reversal if we were to do four things. Humble ourselves, pray, seek his face, and turn from our evil ways. Now, this is where I need to get your pen because I see movements in this text. I want to give them to you the way the Lord gave, gave them to me. And I pray that you could uh, receive what, what uh, the Lord has given to me. The first thing I want you to write down is the powerful presence from paradise prompted by prayer. I know that's alliteration. I, I, I flow like that. The powerful presence of paradise prompted by prayer. The powerful presence from paradise prompted by prayer. The text clearly teaches us that revival began because of the prayers of Solomon. Are you listening to what I'm saying? Prayer got God's attention. Um, so much so that if you look at the earlier part of the text, verse 1 indicates that fire fell from heaven so much that the priest couldn't even enter the temple because the glory of the Lord had filled the entire house. Verse 3 says that fire came down and the people experienced revival, say revival, say revival. They began to bow down and worship God for his goodness and his mercy. The celebration went on. It was so strong that the celebration went on for two weeks. The powerful presence from paradise prompted by prayer. Number two, the possibility for problems even when we pray. The possibility for problems even when we pray. The text is clearly tailored to teach us that even when we pray, there's a possibility for trouble. God told Solomon in verse 12, I heard your prayer and I've chosen to make the temple you have built a house of worship and sacrifice. But then God goes into that litany of ifs as though he's identifying every possible scenario that could unfold where Solomon might know as a leader how to instruct the people. God says in verse 13, if I shut up heaven and there be no rain, or if I command the locusts to devour the land, or if I send pestilence among my people, God is saying, I'm not saying I will, but I'm not saying that I will not. The possibility for problems can hit us all. Write this down. The proposition for the people in the times of peril. The proposition for the people in the times of peril. He says, if my people let me pause there for servant identification. We're all God's creation. We're all his creation. But we're not all his children. For those of us that have accepted Jesus Christ as, his, as our savior, we become children. We become heirs and joint heirs with Jesus Christ. Let me move on. We are his creation. Ephesians 2 and 10 said that we are the workmanship, God's workmanship. In other words, that those that have been redeemed by God. Um, by the blood of Jesus Christ, I consider his people. Um, as a little boy, I'm thinking about call by my name. I got a call by my name. As a little boy, uh, there were certain things I know I couldn't do in public because I was a Moses. I, w I was an Allen. And, and we, I, my granddaddy, my mama, and my daddy, um, our name uh, meant something. And I couldn't just act out any way I wanted to in the street street because of the name uh, that I have. Uh, he goes on to say, if my people, if my people, not any other people, but if my people that are called by my name. Hmm. This is the last movement. The power from paradise prompted by our prayers. God says, I will straighten it out if you pray. I will straighten it out if you pray. God says, I will. That's a definite article. He says, I will straighten it out if you pray. He said, I will hear from heaven. I will open my ears to your cry. Hear from heaven. Let the church say, hear from heaven. I will take the earplugs out and cause heaven to be silent. I'll tell the angels to hush their singing. The seraphims to cease their playing their harps. I'll tell the 24 elders to pause their praise and I will turn my ears in your direction and hear your prayers. He says, I will forgive their sins. Until God forgives you of your sins, your prayers are no good anyway. 
we block our own prayers because we're too honoring to ask God to forgive us. I don't know who I'm talking to, but prayer is also given to us to ask the Lord to, for forgiveness, to make right, to ask him to forgiveness that the wrong uh, that we have done, that it would be cleansed by the blood of, blood of Jesus. He said, I will forgive their land. I will I will forgive their sins and heal their land. What does this mean? Let me read because I don't want to get thrown off. Heal their land. What does that mean? Because I, I can't find it in anywhere in the New Testament where God, where the Lord has promised to heal a piece of real estate. If God has blessed your property or your home, that's extra. What he means here is that I will stop the killing. I can bring families to church. I can cure coronavirus. I can make a difference in the lives of people. The lost will be saved. There will be equality if the people will just obey me and pray. I'm giving this lesson today, and I got about five minutes left. Because prayer is the, is the solution to every problem. But the answer is based on certain conditions. One of the reasons why we feel God does not answer prayer is because we don't know the conditions of prayer. There's a clause in the contract here. After all the things that God says he would do in response to Solomon's prayer, he says, if. Don't miss that. That's the clause in the contract. We want God to hear us, forgive us, and heal the land of this coronavirus, but we ignore the clause in the contract. You got to read the fine print. It is possible for God to hear, forgive, and heal if the King James, uh, in the King James, if is given over 1,500 times, over 1,400 verses, and each time it places a condition on God's promises. We think God is a bellhop that just jump at our every beckoning command. We think he's some little Lord Flauntroy. Lord, heal, heal us up. Take care of my enemies. But there are some, con some, some clauses in the contract. Prayer is conditional. Let me give you a couple of past scriptures for you to write down. I'm not going to read them, but I want you to write down and go back and look at them. Exodus 19, 5. Deuteronomy 8, 9. Isaiah 1, 18, 18 through 20. Matthew 17, 20. John 13, 35. This is a good one. John 15, 7. Romans 8, 31. Romans 10 and 9. Revelation 22. 18, 19. Tell somebody or tell yourself there are conditions by which God answers prayers. If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sins and heal the land. We need prayers, brothers and sisters. We, we, we need to pray. Calvary, we have to come together as a church family and pray. I remember a story that was told by the late Dr. Frederick Sampson. Um, he told the story of how a guest preacher came to the church and at the Tabernacle Church, in, I believe it was in Detroit, Michigan. And he gets up and he says, Lord, get all these drunkards out of here. Get all these homosexuals and whoremongers out of here. Get them out of here. And, and because the church is not meant for none of this. And Dr. Samson got up and he kind of moved the guy's side politely and said, bless you, sir. And Dr. Samson said, all you homemongers come back. All you homosexuals come back. All you drunkards come back. He said he told him to come back because he said, God's house is not a museum for saints. It's a hospital for the sick folk. And brothers and sisters, we all have some sin in our lives. But the important thing that we have to do is we have to confess our sins unto the Lord. First John 1 and 9 says that if we confess, if, there we go again, the Lord is faithful and just to forgive us and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. When we make a decision not to pray, when we do not pray, when we don't come together as a church family, this is what happens. We open the door for attack. Did you hear what I said? When we do not pray as a church family, we open the door for attack. But then also, we close the door of assistance. All of our help coming from God. We will look to the hills from which cometh our help. All of our help coming from the Lord. When we refuse to pray, 
We open the door of attack. We close the door of assistance and we sit at the door of anxiety. And that's where many of us are at right now. We're at the door of anxiety. I'm, I'm teaching this because the church needs a revival. Yes, the, the land needs to be healed, but the church needs a revival. And the gospel needs to be preached for such a time as this. Brothers and sisters, time is winding up. And we have to look at or hear what God is saying from heaven. I know a lot of folks say um, the church is always making it spiritual. That's because we are spiritual. And if you're not spiritual, then you don't understand what the spirit is saying during this time. Of course, we have to be spiritual because the Lord speaks to us during times like these. So what can we do to make a difference? I got three things here I want to give you, and then I'm going to give you some prayer requests. And then we'll be done. I said 15 minutes, it's 16. I'm sorry. Give me a few more minutes. I'm sorry. Uh, the first thing we have to do to make a difference is we have to lay pride aside. If my people, which, which are called by my name, would humble themselves, we have to lay pride aside. If we had more humility in church, um, we would be on our way to changing uh, the world. Lay our pride aside. But then you have to increase your prayer life. I'm not talking about now I lay me down to sleep. I'm praying about getting on your knees and praying and talking to the Lord. In, in days to come, I'm going to give you some, some uh, prayer uh, techniques in prayer. But you have to increase your prayer life. Number three, you have to set out on a mission to know God. The text says, if my people will seek my face. Brothers and sisters, seeking the face of God is more than just showing up to be counted on Sunday morning or just being present on the prayer line or just watching in for this Bible lesson. It requires you getting before the Lord and seeking him diligently. Hebrews 11 and 6 says that he that cometh to the Lord must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently, diligently seek his face. That word diligent, diligently is a powerful word. Exadio is the word in, in, the, in the Greek. And, and, and it means to investigate, to crave, and to demand. And the reason why so many prayers are not answered is because we don't we don't know God bad. We don't want him bad enough. We don't seek his face bad enough. But number four, you got to change your ways. Uh, some people refuse to change, and change does not come overnight. Paul says uh, in 2 Corinthians 5, 17, If any man be in Christ Jesus, old things have passed away, and behold, all things become new. It's a process. Walter Hawkins says, a change has come over me. He changed my life, and now I'm free. So, let me stop right there. Um, I pray that I could have gone on, but here are the three prayer requests that I'm asking for Calvary to center our prayers on. Number one, healing the world. Not only just from coronavirus, but a spiritual healing in the world. When we pray, we're asking the Lord to heal the world or heal the land in the verbiage of the scripture. But number two, we're asking the Lord for revival within the church. Revival is not just preaching and singing. Revival is restoring the relationship that we have with God. But then the last thing that I'm asking that you would lift up in prayer is for the gospel to be spread to the world. It's no coincidence that what has happened has happened now for such a time as this. I believe that God has positioned each and every last one of us in the kingdom to strategically get his word out. And so I'm praying that the gospel will be preached. Our Father in heaven, we thank you. We pray now, God, that uh, this lesson is not falling on deaf ears, but that you would move by your spirit, that we would pray and that we would turn from our evil ways, that we would seek your face, that you would heal the land. God, we know that you're able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we could ask or think. It's in the name of Jesus that we pray. Amen.